This kind of video is showing you a solo flawless harbinger mission. Uh, for those who just want to see this and skip the time on the screen, for SV I can show you what the modifiers were, what I was using, etc. So this is a new secret mission that is ask zero hour type whisper mission. Without the timer, there's no timer on this mission, but it is very well designed in my opinion. It is a 1270 power mission and the modifiers are Income and solar and environmental damage is increased. Match game, chaff, empath, champions and stopable. So we have to um, take those into account. There's a bunch of triumphs that are associated with this mission also, which I'm not going to go into all of them. But I'm just going to go into the ones I got on my first solo flawless run. So my first solo flawless run, I got the Harbinger, which is complete the mission. Then we got... Immortal Harbinger, so you do flawlessly without dying, then you do a solo flawless. This is why the solo flawless is important if you want Alpha Hunter. Then we got Lone Harbinger, complete the activity Harbinger solo, and then we also got complete the activity Harbinger in 15 minutes or less, which I didn't, I'd done it longer than that. So all I can say is that the Triumph is probably bugged for Hunter Killer. But if it's not proccum for you on your solo flawless and it's been longer than 15, go and get a team and do it. Because it doesn't say, you know, solo flawless in 15 minutes. It does not say that. But I ended up getting it anyways. So there's a bunch of other triumphs which I'm not going to get into for the video. It's just the ones that I got on my first run. So this is going to be on a Warlock. First run, we'll do it on other classes. But we'll do it on a Warlock first. So Void Walker, Top Tree, Void X Grenade, Heal and Rift. Paired that with the Exotic Gauntlets, Contra Reverse Hold. So improved charging for our Void Nades, which we get way more nades than usual. In terms of weapons, we're using the Officer Revolver Hand Cannon because it's Unstoppable Champions and it can create War Mind Cells. We're using an Arc SMG, which we do go from this to the Void Scout at certain times. So we swap between those, but we always keep Xenophage on an exotic machine gun, so uh, it's very good for this mission. Uh, we've got all War Mind weapons on, so we're using War Mind build with War Mind's Protection, Rage of the War Mind, Wrath of Rasputin, Global Rage. Okay, so that's basically all the stuff that we're using. We have got perks to match. So we got Machine Gun Scavenger, Recuperation for our health, which is really good. Solar Damage Resistance because income and solar is a lot more and you get wrecked quickly off a solar night. So we've got double on. Probably could get away with just one. Good Unstoppable Hand Cannon. We had Overload Rounds on for all. Oh, that was something I was doing previously, so ignore that. And we've got, obviously, ammo finders on. So, that was the setup. So, just after reset, you had to come to this uh, particular part at the map. To activate the mission. But after doing the mission, the mission actually appeared on the map as a blue icon. Uh, now, I'm not sure if that's there for everybody. And it was just, like, sort of on a timer. But I'm not sure, but... The Whisper mission you used to build, uh, you used to have to do normal, and then you would you unlock the heroic version on the planet. But when you go to the map, it's, it doesn't say that it's an heroic version. It just says it's the same. It's just the same, more than likely, um, as what we're doing right now. So, um, with this, it just follow the directions as you see. So. Not much to it, but when we get into it, it's like I said, this area is very good, and it was leaked last month. People had got into this area. You you need to shoot Hawkman to get through. You don't need to do that now, uh, as the holes always need to be up, and obviously you'll have it on your map anyways. So this is uh, sort of where we want to come to this balcony area. We we'll take out the sniper first before jumping over. Uh, and then this jump is probably going to be the hardest for people. You want to get to this sort of tree here. Go to the very end of the tree and then you're jumping over to that dam, believe it or not. When I was first here, like at reset, I spent maybe 30, 40 minutes trying to find where to go. And I didn't think you'd have to come over here because this way is the way towards Lake of Shadow Strikes. I didn't think that. I thought you'd go a different way. I know that you eventually end up there because it was leaked that you'd go to Lake of Shadow Strike. Sort of thing. But I didn't think it would be through the dam like this. But that those are the two jumps that you need to make to do that. Um you might need to practice those to do it. If you jump off there, you may as well restart to get your solar flawless you don't want to be It's right at the start, so you may as well restart it to warp to get a flawless on it. 
this area is the main hub area of uh, what's going on here. So it stays. Hunt, you know, the, the, the particular enemies, which is just free ultimate. Now, this is interesting how it works because basically an ultra will spawn in. It's always the same. So there's um, a void wizard, then a arc centurion, then a solar knight. That's how the order goes. It goes like that all the time. Now, match games on. So you need to make sure you're matching those shields. Right? Hence why we've got void solar on. We're gonna swap to arc. If if equipment unlock was on, I would obviously just do arc, but it's not. So I'm free to do it. And a scout's decent in this because there's a lot of long range engagements. Now, as you saw there, the ultra fled. The mechanic of this is you do half damage to the ultra, then the ultra flees to another area. You cannot insta kill the ultra. Maybe in a team, but generally I don't think you can. Well, as they disappear, they're immune gated. But what happens is a sniper, some, a couple of snipers will spawn above you. But the ones that spawn at the door, that's telling you where to go. That's the game subtly telling you, oh, the major went this way. So there's not RNG that way. I haven't run this mission enough to know, but there is a bit of RNG elements with this mission, for sure, which I'll go more into. But that's, that's the game telling you where to go, whatever the sniper is. And it's particularly the snipers on the doors, because where they are on the doors, you need to break the doors to get through. The areas like this, for example. So we can play it safe, use our nades, any cells we can shoot down. They're not that threatening. But if you let them hit you quite a lot, then they can be. This is more like akin to a nightfall rather than a strikes here. In terms of sandbox, in terms of how hard the ads hit you. You'll see a couple of times I get myself weak. You know, so you can't just run through it and think, oh, it's a strike, because it's not. So now we're swapping to arc, because as I said, it goes void, arc, solar. That's the rotation of shields. Now this is a good location to take the Centurion, generally, but he was backing right up for me, and he's obviously tethered. Uh, as there's a bunch of ads that spawn around him. If you manage to kill the ultra before all of the other ads, the other ads around... Or not kill, but get him half HP. You rats will actually disappear. So if I was quicker off the mark, take the arc shield down, Xenophage, maybe, but he's gonna, probably going to be tethered by that point. We've got another bomb to use, <coughs> which I do end up using. Which can bypass uh, shields, as in the tether point that the goblins make. <coughs> but we were just waiting for the right time, and then just taking the rest of the ads first. Pretty safe here. All he has a down, so we're just going to go down there, take the shield, then over. <clears throat> As you can see, he gets below half. There's no way you're into killing him. It's the nature of of this style of mission. Yeah. What the game wants you to do. Now the phalanx has spawned up there. Phalanx wasn't there before. Now he is. That's the game, like I said, telling you where to go. Follow that path. <clears throat> and it will take you to another mini room. This particular room has a lot of scions, duplicate and scions, and the boss. Now because Centurions, they do void, an arc or what, whatever, they don't do solar, so you, they're not that threatening. It's the solar knights and, the, and stuff like that, or the captain. Hard point. Once you've killed the ultra in a mini room, by the way, you can leave that mini room and go to your next major. You don't need to get around clearing ads, uh, which is something I learned while doing the run. This runs pretty slow, and I could have done it way quicker than what it was. Uh, but like I said, it's main testing, and it's you know within the first couple of goes of testing what happens when you. You do certain things. Now I'm just switching off because I'd run a sword on a previous So I forgot to switch over to machine gun stuff and uh, have you. But it is a nice surprise, very good mission, well designed, it's a big area. When you're first coming in here, it's a bit overwhelming puzzle wise. The area and everything is similar, but 
very well this game. Now we've got a solar shield here. But this is where Xena first will come in. We're gonna get him to half health and then the rest of the yard should be spawn. Like so. Bridge it up. We're now gonna swap um well we will after this major kill. Back to our void. So this is where I start to lose track, um where I was unsure on which room it was. Um, but now watching it back I knew that it was the room where you climb sort of a mini tower in the middle of the room and you climb that mini tower and you get to where you want to be. And I was just sort of exploring and there's, there's a couple of secrets in this mission as you saw with the time to told you at the start. There's a couple of buttons you can press in this room, in this sort of area. We open the doors and took Right now, as me making this video right now, I don't know anything about all them secrets. Yeah, so if you're watching this two, three days time, all that stuff's been found. Bear in mind, this was uploaded the day it came out. Yeah, and my intention wasn't to be looking. This this run was just to get the solar flawless on it, um, but I didn't know. I was just wanting to do a solar flawless on it. I didn't know there'd be triumphs like that for this. And then when doing it, I didn't realize they've all pop up like they did. So this area is a dead end, which is this. Like, as I said, um, I do sort of lose my way in terms of where I need to go. Now this was the room with the, remember the Ark Centurion? <clears throat> so we don't really need this room. was I do know it's the door opposite to me right now the door opposite to me where the tower I think I end up going elsewhere before I go there There's a bunch of exits like there, there was an exit, the door is closed. But there's a lot, like I said, a lot of secrets within the secret mission. Which is what we want really. We want stuff like this. Um, just like this. Really good. It's also numbered as well as areas, so that's it, uh, area zero. One, two, three. Whether those numbers mean anything, I'm not sure. I just find it strange that all numbered like that. But we're going to head back to the area where you're meant to go. <clears throat> like I said, if I'd done this over, I wouldn't have uh, messed about exploring like that. I think we tried at the other end as well. Checking if there's any jail uh, doors, which there wasn't. That's fine. In, the, in that particular room I just passed, there's actually a switch in that room, which I did find. When doing it, I don't have pressing it on this one. Eventually we'll help, um, go to the particular room that you need to. It's the opposite side. It's like I see, you'll see, the, I won't have actually went to that room yet. It's just slowed the run down tremendously. I lost around five minutes about with that. So now this room here is where you're climbing. <clears throat> Halfway through. This is where the uh, major will be. Just use another bomb. And be careful of that. Getting hit. As I said, the enemies hit quite hard and I'm quite high in power. So be careful with that. And then on with to the next section. So it's got stages which I like with this mission. It's got that first initial jumping platform. Okay, so it's got the, all the aspects of what like a mini dungeon or a mini 
what a mission would be like. It's got the puzzle aspect, it's got the exploration, it's got the jump section, it's got a horde type section, which I'm coming up to now, and it's got the boss fight at the very end. So even though it's not the biggest of mission, but it's, you know, it's bigger to, bigger than what we're used to, that's why the world is my eyes it's well designed and not only that on the on the end it's got secrets it's got secrets and a bunch of triumphs associated with it which aren't gonna be for everybody but for those that like it they're gonna love it do you recognize this area this is the lake of shadows section where we stay on the strike it's slightly differently designed so the taken doesn't come all around the area which is good, <clears throat> means there's a lot more cover than usual um, but having run this um, mission more than once I can tell you that the ads are in different rotation so I have wizards first so it goes wizards, knights and centurions now you can have the centurions first then wizards, then knights, it's in combination it can be knights first it just depends yeah, on my first run for example I but knights, um, centurions, and they were arc shields, which was fine. But then on the next time doing it, it was knights, um, solar shields. So it's unpredictable with that. So your best setup is just having all three elements on because obviously match games on. So you gotta be careful. Just take out all the remaining ads, which there was a couple hiding, which they do, which they can. But the thing is with this section is they sort of hide as you as you can see. But you need the ads to trigger the next part. And there's multiple phases in it. You're also gonna get champions as well. Okay, so that's our next set of ads. We've got a cell, so we'll use it now. So, we've got a champion here, so we'll stop him. Put a converse hold nade on him. Run off. This is the Centurion phase, so it's obviously important to know what you're up against because also the snipers is very dangerous because two or three sniper shots and then a void blast off a Centurion will kill us. So I would highly recommend using Xenoverse to take out any snipers that you have that are above you because you need to do a lot of map rotation in this one. I was aware there was a champion still alive as well but he's not pushing so he's somewhere. So we're just cautious. Obviously there's no radar on which is actually interesting for this encounter because you don't really know left and right. So be cautious. We'll go for the shield when we can. And we can use the British interface to take him. Or need. Still snipe up as well, as you can see, you got pretty weak there. That's why it's important, right there as well, literally. That solar damage resistance there helped out with the snipers, basically. If I hadn't had it on, that obviously would have been a death, and I would have to reset. Most ads are down now, so we'll just take care of the unstoppable. Any remaining ads. Our spores of wall come in handy on this section because you're going to be using a lot of heavy. Or quite a bit. Probably more than what I did. I didn't use that much. Should have used more than what I did. But we can get finisher kills on the champ to then farm up bricks. As you can see, get a finish kill, there's my brick. So. It means that we have a constant stream of heavy and then when we leave this area, because we've still got a boss fight to kill, we've still got a lot of stuff. We use a Nova Bomb here because it's knights and knights are threatening. So it's worth just doing that. The champions aren't so bad, you can control them. 
We definitely want to get some of the goblins down, so we'll get an hit on the other pack. Of they they spawn in like sort of two waves. Make the shield. And now I'll go need. Back in a bit. Take out remaining adds. The solar knight is pretty weak, but there's two champions up, so it's kind of dangerous. We've got to sell here, which is what we were wanting to do. <clears throat> to clear out any remaining adds. That's where the current verse hole comes in, so this beauty of the build. Obviously, you can use your melee as well to get your grenade back. But the current verse hole basically it's infinite nades to a certain extent if you hit a beefy target i.e. a champion or a boss your nade will proc two times as you can see and I get my nade back so that's why we're using it and we're also using it for the end <clears throat> at the end it's very good right now we're just sort of uh, managing our health we want to get a finish kill on this champ here They cover with shield blasters and then we'll you know then finish it again. So we're max on heavy. That's our part done. There's a chest that spawns there. I don't know why, but it just give me glimmer. That's just what happened with it. Come with the next section which is a jumping platform again. Not much to it. <clears throat> you just need to know where all the ad spawns are, the sniper spawns, and where to jump and not to fall off. So obviously fall off. You won't get your solo flawless. You may as well do the solo. In, you, you may as well do the solo flawless all in one. Not just do the solo, then do the flawless. Just do it all in one go. So there's going to be no more arc shields. There's only going to be void and solar. We'll go through this teleport in section here. <clears throat> and then we want to jump over to this location. Now with this, is, as I said, it's a jumping platform. It's pretty good. It's not as good as some of the other jump platforms we've had in the game, but it's not so bad. We've obviously seen part of this anyways, so we've actually seen the final boss already, which is a misstep. They shouldn't have released that first mission when they did. Uh, this mission right here, what we got now, this is should have been how we get Hawkmoon. Yeah. Then there should have been a heroic edition to get the catalyst. That's what they should have done. Or link the catalyst to the feathers. Uh, I know there's feathers to collect. So one of those two, but the, that's one mistake I think they've done. Because we've already seen the final boss weeks ago, so kind of like, all oh, right. <clears throat> Whereas I think if it launched, like right, you know, a couple of weeks ago, without us known know what the final boss was or anything what the room looked like and he had all the rest of it on top you know shooting hawk moon to get through the wall and the platform and then i think it would have been a bit better but like first impressions put a void shield here take that before we jump across Pipe. You can use the first shade if you wish. I was just using the scout to save up on ammo just in case. This jump can be dicey, but just make sure you land on the railing. Jump across to the red pipe. One thing I didn't show on my Hawkman, uh, my random rolled Hawkman, so I got moving target on mine. And another perk. It wasn't a very good roll, which I haven't looked into to see what the god roll is on it. But you do in fact get random rolled um, Hawkmoons off this mission. Pretty 
pretty close to the end of the platforming. This bit's gonna be the hardest because there's um there should be one or two snipers, but there's only one sniper on this one. Confusing. From my previous there was two. But you wanna make you jump over to the ledge that I'm looking at now. <clears throat> Which you can with properly timed jumps and then you're looking to get over to the ledge. Far like right in front of us. Then you'll have a sniper to take. This location here is good for cover as well, and you don't get booped off, which I was checking. Just use Xenophage there just to get rid, and then that's basically the end of the platform. There'll be an unstoppable champion at the very end of it, which we can use to um, our advantage, but ammo wise. Yeah, there's heavy ammo on that cliff area there as well, so we can consider that. And we've got a heavy brick there, so there's two bricks, and we've got a champion, so we can farm up a bit of heavy. We'll do a stop, do a nade. This is the playstyle of Wild Walker, if you haven't seen it. Let the grenade do the work, and we can do it again, as you can see. We didn't really need to play, that's one thing with this one, I played very passive, but you don't need to play as passive as I did. But if you play super aggressive, you can wipe unintentionally. Just because of how much damage they do. So we're getting to a finisher stay, get a finisher kill, get a brick on the floor, and we're max. That's two or three bricks behind us. And the previous area behind us won't close. Now if you wipe at the boss and start killing the boss again, this area will shut off which is interesting, but if you don't, you can still pick up ammo behind. So we'll start off the fight with a grenade and nova bomb on the boss. That will then send the boss away. And then we can fight back from this location. We can also do nades. Now, with this particular... where this map's designed, you want to play back from here. And you want to see if you can get any opportunities to get on the solo nights. Well, obviously they can get tethered at times. But until then, you're just going to be... Um, keep going for the Acolytes. Now the Acolytes are on an unlimited spawn. Now it's weird how this room works. Uh, as... The two solo... There's one solo night left and right. Which aren't... Safe to get at times. Because of all... The boot walls. Where the knights are. And all the sheer amount of acolytes. And because of solar damage increased. So you want to take them out from a distance at an opportunity. Which doesn't always appear. It just depends on when the goblins. And if you can get any goblins down. That's going to help you to do it. But the acolytes on the cliff area where the knights are. They don't spawn up all the time. The only way to spawn is on the floor. Which they'll just spawn over and over. They're on sort of a timer, I believe. That seems how it works. Um, so it's not just a case of clearing the room and you don't need to knock. It's, you need to clear the, the left hill and the right hill. Then the adds will stop spawning. Then you'll get a, the boss to spawn back in. Since they're all void, surely void is very important. Hence why we've got the void scout on. Just in case uh, for Nade. I haven't got our need to use. This fight, this boss fight in particular is basically um, split up into three sections. So you do a third damage each time and then, then it's just killing the adds as you can see. Once you see one phase, more than likely the same um, for the rest of it. You can push up a little further when most ads are down, like I said. Once the knights are sort of down and the acolytes on the hill area are down, the unlimited spawn stops. Weird. But if you leave the acolytes and the knights up on the final, um, on the cliff area, then you'll keep getting acolytes on the floor. So it's kind of weird how it works. So the game's wanting you to sort of engage with the knight and the acolyte. 
you don't, you're going to get punished by keep getting acolyte spawns. That's basically how it works. Now, we haven't got a Nova to use. And we're going to use some dinner fish. That's one thing with these bosses and stuff. They're not very tanky. So in terms of damage, you're not going to struggle there. As long as you're above 1270. The main struggle, I would say, would be survivability like so. As you can see, though, you can come back every now and then. We want to get in below a third, and then he'll go immune, and then we're on our last phase. So pretty simple when you play um, in range like this. Now he's immune. We've got another bomb as well, which we'll save for the final phase. Get up our heavy. There's a, there's more heavy to my right as well, which I actually forgot about while doing it. Got plenty. I'm just looking out for any acolytes left and right. They'll keep spawning their acolyte eyes up. Which is fine because it's a small opportunity for ammo and stuff. If you are low on ammo, there is a, um, an underpass area that I'm looking at right now you can go under. Got to be there for safety to an extent. Obviously we can proc, proc a healing rift as well if we're in problem, like in a problem there. Any opportunity you get on the solar night though, get them down like so. <clears throat> they are a priority. Uh, if they're not tethered by any goblins, make sure you do. That's most adds down I believe, that's both knights I think. Um, so now, at this point, or it might be one more, I can't mind it. At this point you just want to clear the room, because obviously you're not going to get the boss spawning up if you don't. Final acolyte on the cliff area, which will be waiting for an audio audio cue. You'll kind of know when the boss spawns in be a black aura in the middle area like so we'll just finish him off with a nova bomb his elf is buggy you can see that he's fully regen to full and then all of a sudden he goes down to zero it's just bugged he, he technically he was still a third just the game was showing him at full because he wouldn't die from one nova bomb like that but there you go you got the hawkman cart list and a random rolled hawkman which wasn't very good <clears throat> which I don't show in the video and you'll see all the you'll see me collecting all the triumphs that I got on the first solo floors which was very slow could do a lot better but it's just a day one look at it just to show you the approach of what you do you play a passive when something new comes out okay um especially if it's solo flawless and stuff but that was the run on it hope you enjoyed thank you